quick update on how the weekend went. Hope you all had a good holiday. Um, so we got back to the shop. We, uh, I had to change filters on my way there. Got back to the shop. We are still having a couple issues. And if you all know that sign, you know where we're at. Uh, so we changed filters quick. Uh, shop guy wanted to update some programming for me. So we did that. And uh, about 10 miles from the shop, we had that SCR fault come back on again. If you remember where it kind of screwed us the week before and paid that shop all that money to not find anything. Came on again. Looked through the programming. It was inactive again. Whatever. Did a bunch of programming. Cleared all the codes out. And uh, put a bunch of anti-gel in. Some more anti-gel in the fuel because we just it was just too cold to have any issues. Um, I put in that house, and I don't know. Maybe that stuff just wasn't doing what it needed to do. I had a bunch in there, but uh, we put the power source stuff in there and uh, stirred the tanks, let the tanks settle, and turned the key on, and bam, SCR fault again. Didn't even do anything. So uh, got a plan going, and I left the truck there over the over the holiday weekend. I took a car home. And they tore the uh, SCR harness off because it was two weeks, over two weeks to get a new one, and $2,200. You go, holy crap, that's ridiculous. So I stuck a young buck on it. He pulled the harness out, and they found the wire that was rubbed through and uh, repaired that. And here we are. I got a load of light poles. In Conestoga, we are headed to Michigan. This one is four stops. Uh, first stop is East Lansing, and then we're ending up in, uh, I believe it's Hope. Hope, Michigan. So, we just stop to uh, top our tanks off because this is a cheap area. Real cheap fuel here and wanted to fill up our def tank, which will be fine. It's 25 degrees and we are not parking right away. We're gonna burn some of that down. So it should be good. Put more anti-gel in too, just to uh, cover that fuel that we just put in. But we should be good. We are going to get on down the here. Just wanted to touch base with you guys, give you a little update on what happened, and hopefully we have that SCR fault um, warning system thing fixed. So, so far so good. Let's see if uh, let's see if we can get through the night. We've got 436 miles to go to get to East Lansing. It says we're going to be there about 1230. I'm sure that's Eastern time. So let's get on down the road. All right, well, it is, uh, uh, what day is it? Tuesday. Tuesday, it's mid morning. Uh, we drove as far as we could last night until it got to be too much. We stopped about two hours from our first delivery. And it was, it was right about midnight. It started snowing again. Yeah, a little bit. It was nothing crazy, but the road was kind of slicked up a little bit. And I was, I was pretty tired, so enough some up and called it. Um, you got to be able to just shut it down. Sometimes other circumstances, you know, kind of dictate that you're not going to get a full day in. But we got slept like a rock last night. Well, that's about, a, about the best sleep I've gotten in a while. So we 
got up, ran up here, got in, did our first stop, and we are now headed to our second stop. Uh, our dispatcher tried to re reload me. I think what they're doing, they're just posting my truck up for an available truck, and, and sometimes brokers will call and, and, and offer loads. Well, you know, if they're calling and offering loads, it's probably not the best. And it was like 1800 bucks to go right back to Minnesota. And I'm like, I told her straight off, I said, this ain't going to work if we keep doing this. You know, I'm going broke making $4,000 a week. You know, that's not going to cut it. She said, I don't have to be home, so let's look for something going somewhere. And I could tell she kind of got frustrated because I'm kind of giving her a uh, open ended search. You know, like she calls me to verify if I want the load or not. So I, I kind of see the frustration on that. So I quick popped up. I found a load going to Louisiana. It's paying like what, 33. They offered it for 3,300 bucks, but I had to pick up today. And that's going to be pretty iffy. Uh, more than likely not. Uh, so she emailed me back saying, uh, you know, that's got to pick up today. I don't think you're going to have enough time to pull that off. To which my reply is, you know, what, what a, a normal, I think what, what a normal dispatcher should be doing. Um, I said, we'll ask him if we can pick it up tomorrow morning, first thing. Broker comes back and says, I really need it picked up today, but if you can, it can get picked up tomorrow morning. If you can pick it up tomorrow morning, he wants to knock $100 off, $3,200. Fucking stupid, but I'm like, you know what? For a hundred bucks, I'm not gonna fucking throw the load away and say no, fuck you, and then keep searching. It's a decent pay load. It's going, you know, straight south to Louisiana down that way. All right. Well, we just finished our last stop. The guys are nice enough. They stayed a little late. We were, uh, got off the main road, turned off on a side road here coming into this place and we were pushing it, you know, guys were staying late for us. And they had the road blocked off. There's a, some sort of a structure fire. So hopefully they got it open because they got to go through there going back. The, uh, so I had to whip it around and go back south and come in the back way but we were able to get in here, we got it all loaded, and uh, just got our kind of our trip figured out here. We're gonna run down to the pilot. Pilot is like uh, 17 miles from where we have to pick up in the morning. So we're gonna get trucking that way and shut her down for the night. But all in all, I'm happy to be done with this low, that's for sure. Four stops is a bit much. We're gonna get a little run at this because there's cars coming and we wanna get the hell out of here. We got that axle dump just so she turns a little bit, a little bit better. We just got loaded. Um, looks like it's a bunch of, uh, it's a big saw, like milling saw for milling boards down thinner type of deal. And then there's a big table behind it with the track system uh, and the junction box for it. Check out the whole trailer, it was pretty tight. But just sitting here for a minute, kind of getting everything in order, trying to cool down. Part of the sucks is you, you know you're all dressed up for you know 30 degree weather, cold stuff. 
then you back into a building in a factory and you're working in the factory you know and it Jesus Christ it feels like it's 80 degrees in there sweat your ass off pull back out chill your ass off you know but it's getting pretty warm truck says it's 43 degrees it's supposed to be pretty warm today so that'll be a nice mess on the road but um, I think we got everything in order I'll flip you around and we'll show you how to be getting through this town all in all it wasn't too bad it only took about an hour to load it I guess there's another truck coming for the uh, rest of the parts too if it freezes tonight and all this melts and then it freezes I guess little hill will be a nice little area to roll through but all in all it's pretty light I think they said it was uh Brokers saying it was like 15,000 pounds worth of equipment. Let's see if I can remember how to get out of here. GPS fun, me go down like goofy ways town and I know I, I looked it up on the map and I knew kind of the best way to get in and you can see where the warehouses are you can see some trucks up here and that's what I love about satellite views you can actually see how wide the road is you know there's a little bit better feeling once you're coming in you kind of know if I wouldn't have done that the GPS is kicking me all sorts of angles here going different streets like it wants me to turn right up here instead of we're going to go left. Uh, this is the way I came in. Yeah, of course there's a truck coming. Another tip too is you can see all the tracks. It's kind of nice about the snow. Summertime you can see them. You see a lot of big black marks. Like GPS wants me to turn left here. Nobody's going that way. Gotta follow the tracks. Usually keeps you pretty safe.
question for you. See how smart some of you guys are. If heat rises, why is it colder when you go up in a mountain? Let that sink in for a minute. If heat rises, you think uh, the top of the mountain would be warmer than it is down at the bottom. going to be my rant for the day just watching this guy back up across the way jesus christ some of these guys are fucking ruthless on the clutch if they even have a clutch it's probably an automatic but we are in mooresville indiana stopped at the loves i uh i gotta do a break uh, a 30 minute break and get something to eat I quick backed it into a stall <laughs> shut her down went inside got food <laughs> nobody around me and uh, and this place wasn't that busy when I came in it's fucking slamming right now <laughs> but I uh, went in got food came out and I almost fucking had a heart attack Swift was parked next to me. I thought, Jesus Christ. This is going to fucking be expensive lunch. I'm going to end up getting mirrors and a hood. I think they pulled into the stalls in front of us and backed straight up. They had to have. Because they didn't hit me. But then here comes another Swift. Swift. They're back. They're backing in next to that one. Oh fuck! And it's a trainer with a woman driver. I feel sorry for that guy. But my question of the day: I understand you're new. I understand you're learning. Um, I don't expect you to hit the hole one shot, especially if you work for Swift. But she couldn't move the truck more than a foot max without stopping, getting out, pulling the brakes, you know, walking around. And it's like, you have to pass all this when you get your CDL. You have to be able to angle back. You have to be able to straight line back. How the fuck can't you back up into a parking stall when there's one truck on your driver's side, no trucks on your passenger side. It took them, her, 
literally 20 minutes to back the fuck into that hole. A big ass hole. There were so many trucks lined up, it's ridiculous. That's probably where all these guys are coming from. They've been out on the fucking interstate waiting. But I don't know how you get a CDL if you can't fucking back a truck up at all. Like, you could tell, like, this is probably her first time having to back this thing up. But it shouldn't be your first time. Your first time should be with a state rep getting your CDL. Not even. That even shouldn't be your first time. CDL school. Plenty of times you should have been backing up there, too. Shouldn't be your first rodeo. I don't mean to sound like an asshole, but not everybody belongs behind the wheel of a semi. my rant for the day well we're just relaxing finishing our break quick probably going to top our fuel off and uh, get on down the road we got a ways to go but we ain't going to be there tonight we'll be there probably tomorrow afternoon um, and it's windier than a motherfucker today says it's 30 mile an hour but boy you come out and through some of these trees and it almost takes you off the road it's pretty bad but it's 55 degrees so that's a nice part so i'll flip you around here and we'll get an idea of what's going on around us all right so let's show you So this is the blue Swift that was there. The white Swift came in next to it. That car hauler backed in. That wasn't too bad. That Migway over there, that was the one that was romping the shit out of the truck, trying to get it in the hole. Don't know why you picked that spot right now if he's that's how he drives. But look at these guys come cruising in here. They're all getting backed up down there. They're all racing down in there. Slow down, guys. This it makes no sense. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my shit together. I'm probably gonna let that line die down a little bit before I start stabbing hours on the clock. Let's see how RTI does. RTI is pulling in. Bob Taylor. Oh, yeah. Nothing like taking up a good whole truck spot with your bobtail there, bud. There you go. We don't need it. There's another one over there that did it, too. I don't know what truck that is. I don't see it. it. Looks like a prime truck, honestly. It's got that. I can't even see it. Got that grill guard on her. I wonder if you can get through the stuff on the window. Probably not. Grill guard on her, and she got some fake flames on her, so she got to be prime. Out of here. I see hauling IL. The fuck are you guys on? All right. I think someday we're gonna do a truck stop. Uh, truck stop video. Maybe for the holidays, who's going to make the naughty list for the truck stops? But for now, I'm going to get my shit together and we're going to get on the road.